Welcome to another tip on Maximo. I'm your host, Chris Winston from Projectech. Today we're going to continue on query-based reporting, specifically the Format tab. For reference, I've included a URL that will take you to the previous video on query-based reporting and the basic design. Next up should be the Maximo integration framework for data loading. As always, should you have any additional topic requests, please send them to media at projectech.com. The Format tab contains uh, four basic frames. Uh, first, a help text that will introduce uh, these topics and there being uh, filtering, grouping, and sorting. Specifically, filtering allows you to enter criteria at runtime. So if you choose a fields or field to filter on when you're designing a report here on the Format tab, at runtime you get an option to enter in one or more pieces of uh, criteria that will be incorporated into the running of the report. This is particularly important, if not imperative, for any report that you're going to set up to run from the report list portlet on the Start Center. There's no other place to enter in criteria from the Start Center, so you all have to embed it in the query of the underlying report, make filtering available in the report design, or both. Grouping adds emphasis within the report and will organize uh, the data values that are presented and separate them with individual header rows and we're going to go over several examples first and then we're going to go in and actually build one uh, within the query based reporting uh, function within Maximo. Last thing is sorting basically adds order to the report and it should be coordinated with grouping if grouping is used because uh, grouping will provide you with an additional level of sort that will take place before uh, the sorting will get involved so you can uh, focus on essentially a subsort uh, after the grouping is done. And let's go ahead and take a look at some examples uh, in Maximo's report. So uh, here are a few examples of the report sort of as they're finished. Uh, this is just a simple inventory uh, listing report. Shows you uh, the inventory items pretty much as they came out. Uh, in this case, we can see different site IDs, different storerooms, default bins, item numbers. Um, not really much in the way of order here. Uh, this is another one. In this case, it's got uh, individual levels of grouping. So we see emphasis here. This is grouped by site and storeroom. And the groups uh, are sorted in descending order as opposed to ascending order. So instead of saying Bedford up here, you're saying a, a different storeroom and then the individual, excuse me, a different site and then the individual storeroom from there uh, as you go through the report. And let's see, we've got also one that's filtered. So now we don't see as many records, or not nearly as many pages um, that are available or present within this report, and there are not many records. And what this is done by uh, having the filter allowed to enter in one or more sites as well as a specific storeroom. So we've filtered the list now from almost 30 pages down to seven. Uh, continuing on, we have a, a sorted list uh, where we have the, the items uh, essentially sorted, in this case, by item number. So the, you know, we're lucky we've got everything at the Bedford site, although there may be other sites that are involved. Uh, the storeroom order kind of changes up here as is the default bin, but our item number seems to maintain uh, its order throughout the report. And as these are alphanumeric fields in terms of the item number, then they'll sort left to right based on the first value uh, that is actually found as opposed to what you might think of as a truly traditional numeric type sort. And now we've moved into the alphas numerics as well. 
And lastly, we've sort of got a kind of a mixed bag of everything. Uh, we've got filtering, grouping, and sorting. So we've filtered and limited the number of records, uh, and in this case, uh, the number of sites and storeroom. They are grouped by site and storeroom, and they are sorted uh, within those groups. Looks like by item number. So again, a, a shorter list, and you'll note the the grouping provides a uh, sort of ribbon to emphasize the values in the groups. Looks like we've also got uh, the default bin within the group and that appears to be part of the filter as well because we're picking up all the bins that have an in in them. Now keep in mind with this whenever you're filtering uh, your criteria is looking at a you know a single or a group of characters uh, wherever it finds that value in the string. So when we get towards the end we will also find yes yeah, so we have a bin in this case there's an in in it. So the criteria is not necessarily going to pick up uh, what you may think it's going to pick up in terms of discrete values or starts with but in this case is using more of a wildcard search in the process of filtering based on that in this case default bin number. Uh, this dynamic where clause is just picking up the fact that this is criteria that was entered at runtime. So we see that we're filtered on Nashua and Bedford as the sites and the bin number uh, contains the letter N storeroom central and let's go ahead and build this in Maximo. So we'll go ahead and look at inventory. Uh, we'll get rid of the site ID and let's just see what do we have here in terms of records. Uh, not quite 800. So we got a pretty good mix. We're going to go ahead and create a report. And we'll give it a title. We're going to make it public and we'll save it. We're going to stick with the summary level. Uh, in our select criteria, we'll probably add a few fields. Let's give it a default bin. We're going to go to our item master data and let's get our description, which we'll add to the report. Uh, we're not too concerned about the status. And let's change the order here a little bit. Uh, let's go and start with site ID. Storeroom's fine. Default bin. And let's see from there. We'll go with item description and the ABC type. Now, if we move over to format now, and let's say we want to go ahead and group. And we'll notice our, our order is not exactly what we expected to see, considering we've uh, made some changes in how we want to see the fields left to right. So I'm going to cancel here. I'm going to go back to the Select tab. Uh, that's because I haven't refreshed this display. So I'm going to refresh the display to be how I want to see things left to right. Now when I move over to the Format tab and look here, particularly in grouping, now things are ordered more like I'm looking to see them. Alright, so let's go ahead and do one other thing here on the Select tab. If you'll remember from the previous video, uh, applying the current query, this checkbox will then embed the query, whatever query I had running when I built the report, into the report. We're going to clear that checkbox so that uh, whatever query that you run will be incorporated into the report uh, at the time that you run it. Now we'll go back to format and let's start filling it in. So we're going to be able to filter in this case on site, storeroom, and default bin we will allow for multiple values 
uh, in the site ID. Uh, and we'll keep single values and store one bin. We will group and we'll group site. And we're going to make that descending order. We're going to group by storeroom and we'll group by bin. Now, since we have grouping already set, which is also going to sort for us, we can then leverage that grouping so that we get into the subsorts. We don't need to then sort by size storm or default bin. We can at this point sort by item number, or in this case, I'm going to go ahead and sort by description. And at this point, when we move over to the submissions tab, or if we hit submit, we will then be able to uh, run the report. And let's just move over to the tab that contains the report. And basically, it gets everything uh, because none of the criteria has been entered. If we go back to our report now that it's in, then we can go and see what the submission tab would contain. And let's go ahead and grab our inventory QBR. And now we see the parameters, site, storeroom, and bin, where we can indicate uh, sites and specify storeroom. And we're going to leave the bin out. So from here we can go ahead and run a report and then we will get a or what should be a shorter list uh, this time while it's running and we see here yes we've got a, a shorter list now only five pages in the display we've got our site ID and just to make sure sites showing up in descending order Looks like Nashua showed up first and then Bedford and I'm guessing we didn't have any records show up in Fleet because Fleet doesn't have a central storeroom which is also part of our criteria. Uh, within that grouping looks like we have successfully sorted by description C, P, and S as opposed to the 5, 3, and the 2 here um, with uh, regards to the sort order. Now if we go to the last page, uh, the other thing that will be presented is again our dynamic where clause which shows that our criteria that we entered at runtime, Nashua, Fleet, and Bedford as the site IDs and Central as the storeroom. Uh, this is fully supported for downloads of the data uh, as well as the report. And one thing I should mention also, whenever you are downloading, even though this is a report with grouping, when you pass that across to Excel, uh, they will still send the full set of columns. Uh, we don't need those actually. Uh, and not try to push the grouping into the spreadsheet. That way you have a, a manageable list that you don't have to work through. And that's the main difference between exporting the data as opposed to exporting the report, which would then retain the groupings. Uh, thanks again. And as a reminder, next up should be the Maximal Integration Framework um, for data loading. and as always, uh, should you have uh, additional requests for videos, please send an email to media at projectech.com. Thank you.